Welcome to the first Nana's Nook, and hopefully not last. Okay, welcome to the first ever Nana's Nook. I'm Adriana, AKA Nana, and I'm gonna be a mess this entire time, so just deal with it. But I'm the design manager here at CTC, and we decided it'd be a great thing to incorporate a little more creative into our blog post. Um, so be on the lookout for a lot more to come. First up on the couch is the brand team. Hello. Hey, brand team. Okay, so first we're gonna introduce you guys. So tell me a little bit more about yourselves and your role, and basically all that encompasses brand. Um, so I'm John Dixon. Um, I'm the brand identity designer on the brand team. Um, so basically what I do is just think creatively about the brand strategically in terms of like design thinking and solve problem solving to really bring a visual aesthetic that uh, has continuity across the board um, for various brands and companies uh, here at CTC. And I'm Alex. I'm the uh, consumer insight specialist here. And uh, my role is to do handle all the research then the beginning of the branding process. And so um, that can look like one-off research reports, or it is most likely when we're doing a brand book, it's going to be trying to make sure that uh, the brand is positioned correctly, that there's value propositions actually aligned with the consumer. And um, that, that is what I do here. I'm Richard Gaffin. I'm the brand manager, which means I sort of attempt to run the ship and also handle a lot of the copywriting needs uh, for various clients, figuring out messaging, direction, trying to help people find their voice and their vision, and all that kind of stuff. Great, so before we dive into it further, what makes a good brand system? Oh, we each have to answer? Or like collectively, <laughs> I don't know. Let's we'll have a conversation. Um, yeah, brand identity systems. Um, what makes a good brand identity system is um, something that's um, that's uh, cohesive across the board um, from multiple platforms, multiple implementation. Um, but I think one of the other important things is that it um, ties into the value um, in terms of value propositions, vision, and mission of the company as a whole. Um, so that all of those values and things go into every single element that is being represented visually. Mm -hmm. um, here at CTC, we also um, make sure there's another aspect to what makes a good brand, and that's being able to sell product, um, and specifically being able to sell product on the web. Great, so you kind of covered this a little bit, but what is the overarching purpose of brand and identifying your brand? Yeah, I think that the purpose of identifying your brand is to distill into, um, basically into copy and design, uh, to basically take the personality of the people who are running the business and turn it into something that is identifiable uh, on a website, basically, for our purposes. Um, I think the idea of having a good brand is, a good brand gives you a sense of the type of person that you're dealing with, on the other hand. It gives your brand a sense of personality, it lets people who come to your to your brand know um, know that you know the same things that they do, particularly if you're in a, sort of a, a niche space. Um, but yeah, on the whole, it's, it's to provide a sense of familiarity to somebody who comes to you, as well as a sense of uniqueness or personality. It's creating an individual. Great. It's really, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot about creating trust um, yes. and having somebody that you feel comfortable doing business with um, yeah. in every transaction that takes place. Great. Well, if you guys are lucky enough to ever work with these amazing three individuals, you will quickly learn that they have the most in-depth process of discovering your brand and then bringing it to life. So we thought it'd be fun to kind of switch the roles a little bit. Part of their process is asking questions in the beginning phases. So. I want to switch it and ask you guys the questions that you would typically cool. ask a brand. <laughs> Amazing. All you right. guys ready? Cool. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. <laughs> First off, what is the story of the brand team? It was a dark and brooding night <laughs> about four months ago. Um, I 
think that we were all hanging out at uh, John and I's place, and um, it was just sort of a conversation that sparked about ways that we could maybe contribute further from the growth teams, um, and uh, I think identifying some of the, the pain points that we have internally um, when working with clients and, and really wanting to be able to support um, our, our clients in ways that, that we weren't able to or weren't, uh, were sort of tied up with, with other buying roles at the time. And so um, we kind of started to dream about what, what that could look like. And um, here we are, you know, four or five months later, and uh, we're, we're able to kind of dream even more about what that could look like in the, the next year or so. Great. That's awesome. Next up, who do you admire the most and why? Um, so the, the real answer is my dad, because of all the reasons you admire dad. <laughs> uh, but my, let's say, fun brandy answer will be Prince. Why? Because he is who he is, or was who he was. Oh, R.I.P. R.I.P. R.I.N.C. And... Uh, and he, he sort of embodied the idea of being a creative individual who also is simultaneously able to speak to everybody at once. Um, and that's something I really admire in every creative endeavor that I do. Great. So I'm, I'm going to say um, the typical designer answer here, and that's um, Apple and specifically Johnny Ive. Um, the way that they are able to really distill what the customer needs down to the very bare minimum um, and offer that as a product. Um, I think so often in terms of design that there's so much crap that people think would look good or put this on there and this is going to be awesome and well, all this stuff. It just builds up and creates noise whereas they look at the problem in a different way. Um, and Johnny, I've watched so many documentaries about you know him and his design thinking and his aesthetic and things like that. And it's really just getting down to the root of the problem um, and stripping away all of the unnecessary things to present something that's absolutely beautiful and functional at the same time. So that would be my answer. Yep. What does the brand team do differently than other brand agencies? Well, I think the, the main point of differentiation, you like to say is uh, that we all started on the Facebook ad creation side, which means we all have a expert level knowledge, I would like to think, of how to sell things online. And particularly being really, really tied to the numbers, being really, really tied to specific revenue goals and measurable objectives and all that kind of stuff. And I think if branding as an industry gets a bad rap, that rap is that. Um, it all sort of exists out in some kind of creative cloud somewhere and doesn't really have any real world ties. And so I think where we come in and for how we're different than everybody else is that we know what translates into online sales and we can build a brand and a brand identity that can then be leveraged by our growth teams here, um, by internal marketing teams uh, in order to communicate the offer and uh, what the product benefit is really, really clear. So I think that's kind of what I'd like to think so. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's great because I think most people would look at that as like a backwards process, but we've obviously found it to be successful to learn that and yeah. gather that data prior to building a brand, or at least like we know the knowledge moving forward to where you guys can create like the best brand possible. Yeah, and I think like one thing, one principle that I think we like to proceed from is the idea that your product is your brand and vice versa, to some extent. Like ultimately what you do for a customer is give them a product that gives them value in their life. And so because of our ad background and our um, sales background essentially, I think we have, we sort of have this sort of built-in ability to proceed from that idea that ultimately what matters is the sale because that's the value that you offer to your customer. So how do we build a brand off of that? And how do we kind of make the product look as much of a hero as we possibly can? Yep. I love that. <laughs> Thanks, Nana. Next up, <laughs> what do you currently like about the brand team? Typically, obviously, we would ask, what do you currently like about your brand? But what do you like about your team here? John? Um, well, um, I would say it's... Um, 
our ability to just really dive in and, and we've come up with a system that I think is something that we've just kind of discovered. We, we looked at a lot of different ways of how to like do this branding process and there's a lot of like great agencies out there but if our whole premise is that we're different then we have to come up with something completely new and not to say that everything is like our process is completely different but just how we start with research and how that portion of what Alex is doing um, filters into the design aesthetic is something that I don't think exists really anywhere else and how how aligned we are in that and how we collaborate in that to figure out what is the best way forward visually that's that's one of the biggest things that I'm stoked on about how we do what we do yeah I agree with that yeah I think I just add and just saying I love working with these two sitting next to me they're they're so uh, like life-giving and kind and excellent at what they do and it's so fun to be in a team where each person is um, very adept and suited to what it is that they're doing yeah and when I pass off you know research to John or to Richard I have full trust in their ability to be able to translate that and make something beautiful and compelling on the back end so I think that's just to add to what John was saying. yeah and I've seen these guys in action and I can like confidently say that they were specifically like designed for the roles that they're currently in like they they just amaze me every day so again <laughs> if you're lucky enough to work with these guys like you'll just be blown away okay so what do you want to see the brand team become pushing it even further you're a sleeper take it away <laughs> what um i don't want to see the brand team become. well I, I think that ultimately what we've, we've seen so far with the way that we build brands and the relationships that we build is that establishing a good brand and the way that we work with clients to establish that brand really creates this sense of partnership um, that I think forms a really important part of what our mission statement is, which is helping entrepreneurs achieve their dreams. So if ultimately what we kind of are is an entrepreneurship agency, then my vision for the brand team here at CTC is to become so sort of well known for fostering this kind of really close, uh, really positive partnership that businesses start to come to us because they know that we're here, that they can start with the brand team, that they can build something that everybody loves, and then they can turn it into revenue and sales and growth. So it's a matter of reputation. I guess. Yeah. That's interesting. But, Okay. Moving on, we're going to get a little more fun here with these questions. So, what animal would the brand team be and why? Well, I can say I said a sheepdog. Oh, why? <laughs> uh, small, that's good. energetic, and keeps all of the moving parts in one place. That is oh. great. Um, Copywriter. There we Copywriter. go. <laughs> yeah. Bobby. Any other thoughts or is that just nail it? Yeah, I think that's I was, pretty good. I was gonna say it. monkey, but why a monkey? I don't know. They're kinda of scatterbrained, but, <laughs> <laughs> but they're so smart. Like they're able to figure out things and like have fun with it. And so if you were now we'd be like I just think of the little movies. like capuchin monkeys <laughs> that like go around like um stealing like bread. Thailand stealing things and like <laughs> Yeah, they're just so smart. All they right. know what they want, they go for it. And they have fun a little bit. They're driven. Yeah. 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 All right, we'll go with that. Yeah. No, I like the sheepdog better. <laughs> sheepdog, way better. Sheepdog, that's we'll it. Go with sheepdog. That's the one. Okay, which Game of Thrones character would you be? Um, as a brand team or as personally? You know what? You personally. Oh, jeez. <laughs> or, I don't know, brand team? <laughs> um. No, do you? I would say as a brand team, I would probably say Jon Snow, <laughs> just because he keeps like the bigger picture in mind and doesn't play like these small games, mm. like for power and things like that. He's got his mind set on how do we save like the entire kingdom instead of you know getting just what he wants. Um, I'm only four seasons in. Don't. <laughs> I'm just gonna do character. Gotta cut it. Okay. 
Mm, I don't know, maybe like Varys because he like knows mm. everything that's going on in the in the background and he kind of has a has a hand on all the different ins and outs of the kingdom and wants to see the overall thing succeed and doesn't get tied up in uh, I don't know, politics in the same way that the other characters do. Mm-hmm. Maybe? I don't know, um, I was thinking about this. The first answer I had was Jamie because he has a hell of a rebrand. Oh my god! <laughs> but true. Uh, I'm not sure if the other implications or something going on to be associated. So then I switched to Tyrion because, like a sheepdog, he's small, but he also was secretly the influence behind a lot of what happens. So yeah, I think that's great because you guys touched on like different points and different characteristics, and I think. All of that together, like, literally makes you guys and makes the brand team. And so, I love those answers. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to say I love everything on this interview. <laughs> yeah, this is going okay. really well. <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> um, what would your last meal be? I think individually, because I don't think you can come up with one on as a yeah. brand. I would probably die hungry. Because it'd be the working hours of the day, and I'd be oh. driving home oh. and getting hit by something. Like, yeah, I was gonna have dinner. So, I'm gonna <laughs> so this is an execution scenario. Nope. Oh, yeah. This is execution. Hey, Monica. <laughs> it's like you can have any meal that you toss in the universe before you die in five minutes. Yeah. Um, I would have my grandmother's tacos. Does she do like street taco or like fried? Uh, it's taco. like it's like a fried corn tortilla with like uh, she mixes beef and um, potato. Fresh guac and all that good stuff. Can I come over for family dinner? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was going to say St. John's wort because it's supposed to help you live longer. Oh, <laughs> is that like a real thing? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, the most weirdly named herbal supplement. Interesting. Yeah. That makes me think of um, so a tangent, but um, <laughs> The Nightmare Before Christmas, that little like scientist guy, and he always wants like something wort and frog's breath. Anyway, we can cut this out of the video. <laughs> John, what about you? Um, mine's not too crazy. I, 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 first thing that popped in my head was Roscoe's fried chicken waffles. Um, but there's also this steak that is just the best steak. I think it comes from like Bobby Flay or something like that. And it's this butter, like it's basically seared and then you take it off and you like cut it up and then put it back on the pan and you put butter in it and it like just simmers in the butter and then there's blue cheese crumbles on top and it just it's rich and so good with great glass of wine and so do you make this steak or do you go and buy it I, I make it yeah uh okay. it's bomb good to know. <laughs> it's my favorite meal. your own steak good to know Fa- favorite classy meal so you would make your own meal before you die. No, I'm picturing it'd be like, snap my fingers and just click right there. Oh, that's fair. It's a lot okay. of work. Moving on. Name three competing branding agencies that you admire. Um, I just said it. Winding Kennedy. Okay. Alex? Uh, probably Red Antler. Okay. Richard? And uh, I'd say Gin House. Gin House. Yes. Yeah. Right. They do uh, hymns is probably their most oh. well known, but their design is incredible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, with those three, uh, Mary <laughs> Hill, go. Um, I'll start. I said it. Tough. I'll start. Oh. I would marry Alter. Oh. Okay. That's not. That's, that's romantic. Not <laughs> Wait, that's like polygamy. That's not romantic. <laughs> yeah, that's still messed up, but then I don't have to kill him. So okay. non- non-committal. Wait, you're not answering the rest of them? You just marry all three. Okay. That's uh, a cop-out. I would kill them all. <laughs> Take them all down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he would. There we go. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cutting that Okay, out. moving on. You guys don't have to really answer that. Um, no, I had an answer. <laughs> okay, go. Okay. Um, I was going to say I'd probably marry Widening Kennedy... Um, oh, let's see, this is where it gets hard. Red Antler. Mm. And then kill, um, what is it you said? Probably because I just don't even know them. Gin House. It's like a... All right. Yes. Great answers, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what century would the brand team most 
thrive in? And why? This century? Why is that? Because in every other century we wouldn't exist. And... I would say the 22nd century. What, what century are we currently in? 21st. It's so the 21st. Because <laughs> okay. we're a branding That's agency enough. of the future. Oh. Wow. Hey, I can't do better than that. No? <laughs> the 22nd century? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Pretty okay. good. I was going to say, uh, I was going to concur with Alex and say this century because I would be dead of the plague and any other. So. <laughs> You're just gone. Okay. Last question. All right. Last question. What three brands would you love to do a rebrand for? I'll start. Okay. I would love to do a rebrand for something like Oriata Potatoes. Like oh, really old. Old school. That And give them a complete facelift and an update and see if it actually works. Would you like totally bring them up to like the 21st century or would you kind of do like a rustic feel? Oof. Rustic. That's a good question. Uh huh. Yeah, potatoes <laughs> and rustic works. But I think that's such a fascinating idea, like updating old brands to sort of try to play in a new space. Yeah. And to see if you can do it well in a way that doesn't feel like, hey, fellow kids, you know. Yeah, like Campbell's right. chicken noodle soup. <laughs> yeah, that would be so fun. Yeah, that would be rad. Alex, what about you? I think it'd be really interesting to do something like a like a city. I don't oh. know which city, but something that's like place based that has all these different stakeholders and people that are involved and wayfinding to actual online experiences and something like that. But it's like more like a know. community and yeah, I think that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah something like that. I like that. I think I would really want to do a rebrand for Six Flags. Oh. <laughs> That's Would you idea. change the number of flags or keep it? <laughs> yeah, why is it six flags? I have no idea. Six <laughs> the six flags that have been. I don't know. I know. Six Nobody six knows. Wait, that's, you actually know the yeah, answer? Yeah, that's six, six flags that Texas flew. So when they were part of Mexico, it was a different flag. Oh. Texas, one star flag. What? Did it so start in Texas? History there. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so maybe even yeah. doing a name change. That's the kind of knowledge that that okay. you can expect. They just need a lift. Do you like frequent Six Flags? No, I went once and it it was sketch. It's gross. And the branding is so. And it's really dangerous. Do not go to Six Flags, kids. But as a so I mean as a Six kid, Six Flags if you'd like to work. <laughs> yeah. As a kid, I was always <laughs> like want like love roller coasters and designing theme parks, oh. which is kind of a weird. Were if you, you didn't like know on that? Tycoon. Yeah, a roller coaster <laughs> tycoon <laughs> made like in physics class, made a roller coaster, all this good stuff. Loved I'm not it. Surprised by that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for joining me, you three. I hope you had fun with me today in Nana's Nook. But <laughs> Thanks, Nana. that wraps it up. We're signing off.